we've seen in polar coordinates, the equation that for a circle centered at the origin is really nice. So the question now becomes, what happens when the circle is not centered at the origin? Well, we have a, we have a way to do that. So looking at this picture here, so we're saying that if I draw a line from the origin, because remember, polar coordinates, everything's measured from the origin, right? If I draw a line from the origin to the center, that is going to have length r sub 0. And I'm going to say that the circle has radius a. And what we want to do is be able to describe any point, r comma theta, that's on the circle. And... What that means is if I go to any old point on the circle, that if I draw a line from the origin to that point, it's going to have a distance of r. So the interesting thing here is that we can use law of cosines for this, because think about this. If we say that theta 0, which is written right here, as you might notice, and r and any old value of theta that corresponds to the point on the circle is there in orange, that means this angle right here, this angle right here is theta minus theta zero. So I have an angle and I actually have expressions for all three sides. So we can definitely use law of cosines to establish the relationship. Because remember, this isn't necessarily a right triangle. So remember how that works. Law of cosines says that the angle that we take the cosine of the side opposite that angle is on the other side of the equation. So that would be a. So we have a squared is equal to the sum of the other squares minus 2r, r, 0, cosine of the angle. And this is actually as good as it gets. So there we have it. So that's going to be our established relationship. And yeah, there are special cases that come from that. We could say, well, what if it passes through the origin? Well, then we know some things. So that's going to come into play at some point. So just to use this idea, so let's say we have polar equation of a circle whose center is at the rectangular point, 4, 4, and has radius 3. So if I draw a picture, 4, 4 has radius 3. So we know it doesn't breach the axes. So we're talking about something like this. So it, I need to label what r0 is and what theta0 is. So r0 is the distance from 0, 0 to 4, 4. And theta0 is the angle that corresponds to that. Well, no problem. r0 is just the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared which you could say is 4 root 2, but because we're going to be squaring it, I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 32. And theta 0, by inspection, if you go over as much as you go up, that's a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to say theta 0 is pi over 4. So that means according to the equation we derived, oh, and a radius is 3, so that means a is 3. So that means we have 9 is equal to r squared plus r0 squared is 32 minus 2r root 32 cosine of theta minus pi over 4. And that's about as good as we can get. We can multiply that out, simplify, do some things to it, maybe make it look a little bit more pretty. But as far as we go with circles, that's going to be as far as we need to go. So thanks for watching.